You're listening to Platform 6 Cantina, a Star Wars The Old Republic podcast. We're glad you could join us. Welcome to Platform 6 Cantina podcast. I am Bodhi. And I am Mara, Bodhi's co-host. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Proclamation Null, our very first episode where we want to introduce ourselves talk about who we are um, and what this project is all about. That's right. And wait, before we start, though, legit, not to be confused, it's Proclamation Null, not to be confused with Darth Null. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's spelled completely differently, two L's. Um, yes, but- and, and we'll explain this mysterious title <laughs> as we get into what it's our amazing. project is about. Yes. I do have one thing to tell you before we start. Mara. What's that? How I feel. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. I this is know. B and I have wanted to do for a very long time. And we are on a roll with it. Everything is kicking off right now. And we are so excited. I'm actually so excited. Yeah. I haven't slept for quite a few days. So <laughs> my brain is not really <laughs> at its best right now. But You're we're great. Just, it, we're, we just need to have great. some fun. Everything's <laughs> fine. Is completely fine, but uh, yeah, just just to get started, um, some questions that we're posing: um, Who are we, and what is our story? So, where do we where do we be, we begin with this, Mara? What do you think? Well, why don't we begin with how we met? Um, because I think that makes for a pretty good Star Wars story, actually, and I think it ties into a lot of the the themes that we're going to talk about. Because Star Wars is all about found family; it's about mm. connecting and Aww. belonging. <laughs> that's so true, it's, and I think it's so true. It is true, and that's very much our story. I think um, Bodhi and I met in 2021 on the official Voto forums. Yeah. Um, we are both long-time players. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Um, but I think for both of us, it was the case that we had, even though we had people that we played the game with, we didn't really have a true fandom friend. I don't think that for either of us, we'd ever had a friend who connected with the story of this game to the same level that, mm-hmm. that we did ourselves. Um, yeah, that's so true. It, it's 100% accurate. And I, I think that we we met because I had been so touched uh, by some of the story, right? Um, yes. Obviously, Kotfi Kotet, the story within that I had made a, a basically had been inspired to create a video. And a very literally... amazing video <laughs> that everybody should Why? go and watch Thank on you. our YouTube channel right away. Oh, as soon my as you're God. Listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I. I made the video and I didn't really expect anything to come of it, but I posted it on there and, um, and I freaked Mara, out. Yes. Mara just like was so kind. And I think we just started talking from there to the point where we were so similar in some of our takes and opinions and perceptions of the story that we're just like, this is, this is great. This is somebody else I can talk to. Yes. Um, and I think from there, we might have even made it our Discord. Yeah, it was actually you. You reached out to me first, I think. And I said, did. Look Discord. at me. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you did. I saved your your first PM to me on the oh. for Tall Forms for Nostalgia. So, so you did. Um, and then we made our Discord and had some great conversations, some, some really in-depth conversations. Mm-hmm deep dives into the story and the characters that we both love. And we've had so much fun with that um, since 2021. But we've also had a lot of fun in real life because we took yes. it from being online friends to also being yes. in real life friends. I, and I, it, it's it's mind-blowing because of our, we're, we are both of the same type of personality. And it's it's kind of really odd and rare for us to find another person that I don't know, can a person resonate with somebody else? But it's mm-hmm. basically the just basically the way that I, I felt. It was like, this is a person I actually have a real connection with that, you know, we get along so very well. We think the same on these things. And we actually, <laughs> we actually went on a road trip. Um, yes, we did. Mara came from Europe um, 
over to the U S to visit. And we took an amazing, well, it was like three weeks, wasn't it? Three it was weeks. three weeks and it was coast to coast. So we yes. went, I went across the great ocean and then we went across a great country. <laughs> and that was the, that was the first time we met in real life. Yeah. So and Take, it, taking a risk, right? I mean, it, there's, it was, there's risk. According um, to the the guy in the airport, <laughs> at least I took a very great risk. I had a, a very unique experience. It was actually also oh my, my first time goodness. in the USA. Mm -hmm. As I went through security, um, mm -hmm. I, I got held up <laughs> and told off for taking such a crazy risk. <laughs> yeah, to meet security somebody wanted. in person. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it is a risk. It's it's um, you're taking a leap of faith essentially and it was a leap of faith and um, oh boy did it time, pan out <laughs> it did at the same time obviously we had taken precautions we mm, had talked yes. for a long time online we made sure that we had also had video calls so, yes you know, i knew the body wasn't <laughs> so, don't say i'm really not sketchy. a creeper i'm not a creeper i promise <laughs> um but it was it was still funny that the the guy in the airport <laughs> definitely thought I was taking I mean we'll never risk. forget that story right yeah <laughs> the guy at the airport judging us so hard but but what an adventure what it a, was an um... adventure and I actually feel like that episode in the airport it ties in with how our story is is just you know it ties in again with the kind of Star Wars stories that we love and that we want to talk about taking a leap of faith and going on an adventure mm -hmm. that was what we did yeah and boy was an it it was an adventure the, some of the places we went were just it's it was just mind boggling the the mm -hmm. views and the the vistas and the scenes it was it was it was amazing and yes. we just we did it together right it's just something that we accomplished together we became mm -hmm. closer from that just great great friends and yes. then uh we had another adventure <laughs> <laughs> we did we had a christmas adventure we did in germany mhm mm um, um Yes, it's our it, European adventure. Yeah, uh, and we mean to have many more adventures, of course, down the line. Um, mm -hmm. But but we are both the kind of people who love Christmas. Uh, we like, mm -hmm. we actually, we both like things that are quite dark and kind of scary. Yes. With those kinds of people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but we also really like Christmas. So we, we like the cozy stuff too. So we did yeah. go on a trip. Um, to Germany and visited all the most Christmassy towns, the most Christmassy stores, and and had a yeah. blast. Yeah, and again, it's the it's the journey itself as well. That's just yes, it's, it allows you to become so close to another person and understand even more about them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just I have to say, just I feel so fortunate to be doing an amazing project like this with you Mara oh. it just it, it means so much because what you're such a great friend and this is such a a topic and subject matter the Star Wars Old Republic Knights of the Fallen Empire and Eternal Throne expansions just means so much to us in regard to the story and what they bring um to us it's it's a big deal I'm very very happy it to is be a here. big deal it is mm -hmm. a really big deal. And I, I second everything you said, of course, I feel the exact same way. Mm -hmm. This is just our friendship has just elevated how we feel about Star Wars and Svotol to another level. I mean, yep. for, for me, it just meant I would never have engaged with the fandom in the way that I have if I hadn't met you. And I also right. remember that you were the first person to encourage me to, for example, publish my fan fiction on AO3. I probably never Aww. would have done that. I would have probably just written it just for me if you hadn't encouraged me to share it. And I feel like that's been characteristic of our friendship, that we encourage each other to get out mm -hmm. there and do things and create things. For, yeah. for us, I think this, this fandom thing is very much about transforming all this love and joy that we have for the story into something tangible, whether that is a video or a story or mm -hmm. a trip that we take together. Modeling, art, anything like yes. that. It's, it's literally, it sounds super cliche, but literally our friendship we in our friendship we elevate each other it's it's just mind blowing it, we it, do feel that way definitely yes <laughs> and to be doing this now is just it's it's great and super surreal but yes hey next question what is our swotor story mm. should i start yeah go ahead 
Okay, well, for both of us, um, not to speak for you, Bodhi. No, we, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we are both as Votor founders. We've both played the game since launch. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Bodhi has been a bit more consistent than than I have. I did actually take a really long break. Um, I loved the game at launch, of course. I was super hyped for it. I followed it um, after it was announced until mm-hmm. launch. But I did have to take a break, actually a really long break from 2013 until 2016 because I was going to university and I was yeah, finishing yeah, yeah. my graduate program. And I just hit a point where I thought, okay, I do not have time in my life for an MMO. And of course, those years were actually the years where the the parts of the story that we have come to love the most. <laughs> were I will say, how could you? <laughs> I know. How could you make the choice? If I had known what I was missing, I wouldn't have done it. I would have mm-hmm. been a very bad student and I would have just... <laughs> Continue. On a side note, let's be real. If if this uh, game was out when I was, you know, doing other schooling, just think of how less productive we would have been. Absolutely. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> this would have taken up even more time. Yeah. So when I returned um, in late 2016, of course, I had a lot of catch up, which if if anybody's listening who has ever had that experience where you realize that you are a fan of something and you also have catch up, it's a very intense experience. It's Mm. great, but it's also very intense. (laughs) Well, I mean, you must have felt like, like, oh, my gosh, how could I have missed this? Maybe a sense of regret mixed in there with. In with a, a way, frantic, yeah. passionate attempt to, to catch up. Frantic definitely material. captures the, the feeling. Mm. I, I can only imagine that feeling. But there was a sense of, of regret, as you said, because I remember thinking I would have loved to have been part of the fandom such as it is. And of course, when we talk about this photo fandom, especially for Kotfi Kotet, yeah. it's a pretty small group of people but there yeah. it does exist and it does exist on the official forums um and i remember looking back in that thread dedicated to you know especially arkin's character and thinking oh, people had so much fun people were so hyped yeah and also just the discussions around the story as the chapters were released i did feel a sense of regret for not being involved in that for sure yeah well i don't know what's worse then I've I've been here since launch. I think my account was created in 2011 or something. Um, and I've only been probably unsub for about a month. Think mm-hmm. about that. That's dedication. <laughs> That's like 11 years minus a month, essentially, of being sub non-sub. So I was present. I was here. I was hyped. I still remember the first time that I went through the hunt. Mm-hmm. Um. I still remember that feeling for the first time. I was like, I, I felt out of my depth. I felt like what's going to happen to my character. This, it felt like it was elevated story. Yeah. Not dissing anything else in the game, but just, it felt like, wow, there, there's something happening here. What is, what's going on? It was like that uh, actual feeling of uncertainty, uncertainty, Mm -hmm. but obviously, you know, you, you know, you're not, your character's not going to be written out of the story, but um, I was around for all of that stuff, but I did not even think <laughs> to go on the forums and talk or look at the discussions being had, which I don't know what's worse. <laughs> <laughs> not know, I mean, knowing that the forum's there, but not looking or, or knowing it's there, missing out on it and coming back and having regret from not participating. I, I don't know what's worse either. <laughs> I remember I just, I lurked for a long time because I thought, mm-hmm. mm, I really want to resurrect. I want to necro this <laughs> threat. Yes. <laughs> but I didn't feel like I could. You know, that feeling when you, you mm-hmm. see some forum post and it's two years old and you desperately want to participate in that conversation. <laughs> I got to necro but... <laughs> this. I got to. I, I can't resist. <laughs> I have to necro so, this. Exactly. So I actually just lurked a lot in the forums until you posted that video. And that was actually really? the first time. Yeah. I had only just started really participating no um, on way. the form. Yeah. And I, I think I had something like, I don't know, like 10, 20 posts or something. It wasn't until we started talking that I really became mm. more of a regular poster. Um, which, again, is, is what makes this, this just special to me because 
I've been involved in other fandoms before, but mm-hmm. I feel like I've always been a little bit on the sidelines like that. I've, I've just been unfortunate, I think, and I've always come into things a little bit after the hype died down or when everybody oh, else no. has sort of moved on to something. <laughs> or I tend to pick something so obscure that I'm just the only person in the room shouting about it and nobody else knows it even exists. <laughs> oh, man. So I didn't I'm, know that. You never told me. I didn't know that the video was the reason what you started posting. That's that's even more meaningful. <laughs> yeah, because it was the first real connection, I think, that I had to another uh, fan who really felt the same way about these stories. Because I'd been looking through these old threads, yeah. and I could see that there were mixed reactions um, to Cut V Coated. And, and Bodhi and I are very much aware that that is the case. And we're going to talk about that more, I'm sure, mm-hmm. when we talk about the goals for, for this project and what we have to say about that. Um, but... But I guess it was one of the reasons why I was a little bit reluctant to say, this is the best thing ever. This really is next level content. And and what you said before, Bodhi, about your experience in the first chapter, The Hunt, oh, that's almost yes. exactly. We did not pre-plan, by the way, this episode. We are talking organically here. We didn't yeah. know <laughs> what the other one's answers to these questions would be. But mm-hmm. the things I put in my notes are almost exactly what you just said. Really? <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, I just I'll never forget that feeling of doing The Hunt. It just it just, Me it too. just sticks with you. And it was actually the same feeling I had um, when I saw the Sacrifice trailer, which was how I got pulled back in. Oh, so I was wow. on this long study break. And then, I don't know, I think it just sort of randomly occurred to me, oh, yeah, that was that MMO that I used to play. That was a really good MMO. I wonder what's uh-huh. going on with that now. And then I went to <laughs> YouTube and I oh, saw the Sacrifice man. trailer. Oh. <laughs> okay, just real talk. I would pay so much money to have a time machine, seriously, to be able to watch you react to sacrifice for the first time. Oh my, that would be top tier entertainment for me. But the thing is, I think your money would be wasted because I'm not actually that much fun to watch when I freak out because everything just happens internally. So, you know, my mind no, is exploding, okay. but then my face is mind just frozen. Probe. Then give me a mind probe thing where I could like see what's what's going on, you know? in your head that would be so cool wow it it was an amazing experience i remember watching that trailer um and just thinking okay i was already into this game but i wasn't a super fan i'll be honest and say i was not a super fan of either star wars or sweet all until cut v coated but seeing that trailer i remember thinking this is next level storytelling that there's something here, the, the way I already feel a connection and an yeah. engagement um, mm-hmm. and interest in these characters. All of this symbolism, just the, the oh my gosh, storytelling in, in that trailer. Yeah. Um, with like so- minimal, with minimal, di- it's insane, minimal dialogue. We're yeah. going to have so many episodes. I'm just saying, I already predict it now, uh, going mm-hmm. through the, the sacrifice cinematic mm-hmm. alone. Oh. What, exactly what peak pinnacle content that is like that's that's even um i think one i think it is their top video on the star wars old republic youtube channel and it's one that mm-hmm. a lot of people react to in their own youtube content it, there's a reason why it's the top viewed it's 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 a plus 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 it's i don't know how anything can get better than that it's so true. And and the reactions that we had, mm-hmm. I think are not unusual at all. I mean, if, if again, if as like Bodhi said, if you read the, the comments on YouTube, you can see that it's quite common for people to have reactions like this could be an entire movie or I wish this was a novel. I mean, it, it's that good. Yeah. And I just, I remember watching that trailer and thinking, oh, I hope the actual game can can live up to the feeling that I have after watching mm. this. And, <laughs> yep. and for me, it did. When, yes. again, when, when I played The Hunt, I had that feeling of this is something different. Um, this is next level. And, and I felt exactly the way that you described before, Bodhi. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like my character for the first time was out of her depth, that something really yes. bad might actually happen to her. And then, of course, it did. <laughs> yeah. Which was mind-blowing. And, and what a what a world. What, what, a, what insight f- from the devs to create such a unique world from mm-hmm. um, its own empire, right? Yeah. What pushing the bounds of this, the, you know, duality of 
Sith versus Jedi thing. That this is just, I mean, honestly, I think we're getting carried away. I could we could talk about this forever for this part. You but, mean we could but, gush about this forever? Yes, <laughs> it's, just, it's so it's phenomenal. It's just it is what great story, and it um, was a brave thing for yes. the devs to do. And I think mm-hmm. that the the dev team just they deserve so much recognition and and admiration for for taking that leap and taking that chance because they had this really well established universe i realize it's the old republic so you know there were still things that that they had to make from scratch because it's an era that isn't as or at that time was not as well developed as other eras in star wars Mm -hmm. but to then create a civilization that is entirely their own with their own world building um, a unique take on how people in the civilization connect to the force um, oh, a unique man. take on things like destiny all these major themes prophecy, and powers, yeah, prophecy yeah fate. Mm-hmm. fate but from a new angle I feel like that was really brave of them and it's it paid off majorly honestly it and it, it really when I think of Star Wars Old Republic and what it brought to Star Wars as a whole, this is what this is this era, this mind blowing next level era, Knights of the Fallen Empire, Eternal Throne. That's what it is for me personally. Yes. That's that's Star Wars Old Republic in a nutshell. I opinion. agree. Because it would have been so easy for them to just stick to the mold. You yeah. Know, Republic versus Sith Empire, good versus evil. Uh-huh. Um, hero that has to save the galaxy and although Kotfi Kotet you know, it, it does include obviously all of those tropes and themes it just does it in a way that we hadn't really seen before and, and it adds something to it that's new. Not to mention the power shift right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow it's just you think you're big and bad and then you're nothing what a yes. feeling what a feeling yeah it's it's such a it's just mind-blowing but this is also a good segue for us though yes it is if you want to answer our next next question which is what does star wars mean to us thank you for taking us to the next question because we could probably go about our story for a very long time (laughs) yes so what does star wars mean to us let's let's hear your take i'm dying okay So as I said before, I'm not going to pretend that I was a super fan of Star Wars until I really got into Svotor and especially Kotvi Kotet. But Star Wars was always a part of my life, as it is for, I guess, pretty much everybody, especially in the Western world. It's just something that is so embedded in popular culture that, you know, even if you weren't into it, you, you can't really avoid knowing something about it. But it did always, you know, it always appealed to me because I've always liked genre fiction. I've always been the kind of person who gravitated towards fantasy, science fiction, um, also horror, not so relevant here. But it wasn't really something that I'm I'm not one of those people. I wish I could say that I were, but I'm not one of those people who watched the original trilogy and really connected with that as a child because it just Mm. wasn't really, I don't know if I was just unlucky again or if it just wasn't really on TV during primetime in my country or something. That's interesting. Good point. So I, I do remember having this feeling when when the, the prequel movies came out of having sort of missed out on something and again, having catch up to do, which is both good and bad um, right. because it, it's nice to know, oh, okay, there's all this unexplored content that I can go to now and enjoy. But at the same time, you have that feeling of, oof, I really sort of missed out on something here. So... So I was sort of playing catch up, I suppose, <laughs> with regard to the, uh, the Star Wars movies as well. Um, for a while but the prequels because those were the ones that I had the um, the, the most immediate experience of, of just actually going to the cinema and watching those movies mm. with my parents as a kid um, I love the prequels the prequels are classics I don't care what anybody says yes <laughs> yes I don't care if some of the acting is hammy <laughs> I don't care if some of the lines are cheesy <laughs> It's true. <laughs> they are classics and they're great. <laughs> they are. Um, so 
And I think actually what I really loved about the prequels was the way that they, they just seem to open up the world, uh-huh. um, which especially when you are a child and you, you get a glimpse into that world, it just seems like this incredible playground, all these different weird creatures and strange planets. And, yeah. and that, that, was, that did grab me. Um, but I guess I mostly gravitated towards other things, um, again, until Svetol. But I suppose what it, what it means to me now is something that connects people, um, which is also something that I feel like you hear over and over again about Mm -hmm. Star Wars. I was reading just the other day, I got a book called Star Wars Psychology, The Dark Side of the Mind because that's what Bodhi and I <laughs> When did you get that? That sounds amazing. I didn't know that. I'll share it with you. Okay, um, good. But I was reading the, the foreword. It's by uh, Carrie Goldman, whom I believe is a child psychologist. And she was talking about how Star Wars connects people in the foreword to this book. Um, and she mentions things like the 501st Legion, which some of our um, listeners might know, is an yep. organization. They do charity um, for hospitals and children, and they're also a custom, uh, costuming uh, mm-hmm. organization. And yep. so they do um, they do costumes, especially from the, the villains in Star Wars. Uh, and she talks about all of the good that they do and how they connect people um, and just spread joy. And I mean, I think everybody knows, everybody in this fandom knows that Star Wars can also divide people. I think it's mostly <laughs> true for the films, though. <laughs> There's been a lot of oh, man. Actually, pretty nasty bullying, also yes. actors like Ahmed Best and Jake Lloyd. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, divisions between fans. I think Star Wars fans can be quite bad for saying, oh, I only like this part of Star Wars, and you suck yeah. if you like that part of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> That's but right. If- but if we disregard that, um, I think it's still also true that Star Wars can really bring people together. And for Bodhi and I, that's mm-hmm. definitely been the case. And that that's really what Star Wars means to me, that it's been maybe the first time in my life that I've engaged in a fandom in this way, as something right. that has really just, you know, meant friendships and mm-hmm. journeys. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's completely accurate. And I'll, uh, our stories are are very different. I did not know that about your introduction to Star Wars. That this is great. I love having this conversation. We learn new things I, about each other. I know, right? <laughs> um, but I grew up watching um, Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back. Uh, I remember watching that with my parents, especially with, with my dad. I I profoundly remember. Um, how much the the music hit me, especially mm-hmm. at um the return at the end of Return of the Jedi, um the whole how everything with all the turmoil, all the drama between all the characters, how it all came to a head. I'm gonna actually I'm actually getting chills right now with the the music and the celebration at the end, and it was a, a big triumphant moment after weathering so many different storms and losing people, but also Mm. gaining relationships, gaining friends, very, very good friends. Um, Yes. It it just, it hit me so hard growing up. And I especially have fondness for the Jedi's fury theme, which I did put in one of our recent videos, Um, making sure that it like the video part of it really, did it justice because of how much that music meant to me because of, you know, the fact that it was one of the pivotal scenes with Luke versus Vader sitting in front of the emperor, um, Mm. just embodied the entire struggle, dark light. Um, and infused, it was infused with that whole question of redemption Mm -hmm. is, you know, how does this play in everything? Is it even possible to be fully redeemed? And if so, what does that look like? Mm-hmm. Um, it's such such a powerful, powerful moment for me. And that was something that I was around a lot as a child. And then, because my parents would play it for me. And then we went and saw, as a kid, the prequel movies in the theater. I remember seeing Phantom Menace a few times with my dad. 
because I was like, oh, this, this, the, the guy with the, you know, it's, it was Darth Maul, but the guy <laughs> with the tattoos, he was so cool. And he was on there for like 30 seconds, so. <laughs> <laughs> basically like two lines, but it was such, it was such a, a big thing, but moving over to what Star Wars in general means now to us, we've, we've said this before, but it, it's, it's about the the betrayals, the drama, um, forging those those strong relationships with other people, mm-hmm. um, strong friendships, um, and then there's the classic redemption story, which I'm always a sucker for. You know, I know you are too. I am too. Um, <laughs> it's true. The progression from dark to light, um, weathering the storm, and coming out on top. So it 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 does hit home these stories in Star Wars the Old Republic absolutely adhere to those ideas and concepts as well. And which is why it's such a big deal to us and why this content means the world to us. Right. Absolutely. You put that so well. I love how you put that, Bodhi. Um, I also feel like what you described with your childhood experience, that is to me, that is that classic Star Wars childhood experience mm-hmm. that I somehow managed to miss out well, on. No, I mean, yeah, it's just different different places, different times. Yeah. But I love that you had that experience. Um, yeah. And it's also interesting to talk about how we came to this in, in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had that strange sort of like roundabout <laughs> way to get into this um and yet we've arrived at the same point where we see very much the same things we really have and as it as it just happens the next question is what are our goals for this project platform six Mm -hmm. cantina podcast you want to take it we have some grand (laughs) and (laughs) ambitious goals for this project um we essentially we want to celebrate i think the joy and inspiration that we have found in this story. um, And we would love to share that with people. Um, So so there's also, we've talked a lot about connecting with people and that is a part of this project is we we hope to to share everything that we get out of this with people, to inspire people to maybe play these stories again, maybe with a different perspective. Yeah, a different perspective, maybe a different level of attention paid to Mm -hmm. certain things. I feel like, I mean, I've I've always been a gamer, um, but I've also always been a reader. Yep. And for me, I've always mostly enjoyed games that I could approach with the perspective of a reader. I strongly believe that games can absolutely have literary merit. I believe that games can be arts. And some people might think, isn't that putting it a bit strongly? But I really No, <laughs> I think it's true. You're right. This absolutely is art. And because this is an MMO, mm-hmm. it might not be something that occurs to people right away. Because a- as an MMO, um, you might come to this with a different set of expectations. Um, I do think it's worth mentioning, actually, that um, Svetol is a pioneer in terms of making story and character central in MMOs. And, you know, as as you probably remember, Bodhi, they were actually, they were actually officially recognized by the Guinness World Records um yes when the game launched yes that's right i can't remember the amount of lines of dialogue but people can look it up for having the most lines of dialogue um the voice acting right yes for being the largest entertainment voice Mm -hmm. over project ever what a big deal that was a big deal so i think that's a, a big part of our goal for this project is to really create awareness about that and to encourage people to wrote these stories with that in mind that you know there is real depth to this kind of storytelling and and you can enjoy this game on a surface level as entertainment where you just you know enjoy it for the action and the gameplay and that's fine we're not saying that that is not a valid experience but we're saying that there's something even more to be taken away from this if you want to and if you that's feel right like aging with it on that level there's so much more than that Yes. And we're, we're very, we're looking forward to you joining us. We're, yes. we're very, very excited to have these discussions. And um, we are, and we it, definitely encourage joining us in these discussions. We mm-hmm. encourage leaving comments for us, 
Let us know what you think. Let us know what you have picked up on in these stories, what grabbed you. Because again, we really do want to also foster a sense of community um, and, and, you know, just develop this this fandom and hopefully mm-hmm. make even more for fandom grow around this thing. Yeah. And on that note, we do have limited amount of time left, but we just wanted to re- reiterate one more time just how very excited we are for this project. And we're super stoked that you're all are joining us um, as we delve into these seriously amazing Star Wars stories. Um, but yeah. Yes, we are so excited. And we talked about our history with Star Wars and Spatol. So I think it's also worth mentioning where we're at in time right now. Um, Bodhi and I are both extremely excited for at 7-3. Uh, we don't have a release date as yep. of this moment, but we know that it's coming But because we did have a live stream. And we know that some of the storylines and characters that we deeply care about um, will continue to be developed which i mean we think that's just amazing that this many years down the line uh, these characters still play a role yeah the seven the the release of seven three is just it's going to be mind-blowing and like you just said mara it, it is such an honor and a special it's a special thing that these characters from Knights of the Fallen Empire and, you know, Knights of the Eternal Throne that that can be essentially, oh, well, I guess it's, it's, it is a spoiler surprise, but, you know, if they can be killed, that they mm-hmm. still have a development team actively writing writing content and story for them. It, it's just, it's mm-hmm. mind-blowing. If, if we feel so fortunate to be... We really do. Yeah. And the fact that 7-3 is going to still feature these characters is is amazing frankly so super hyped for it incredibly excited for seven three and we will talk about that further in future proclamations definitely which reminds me that we never actually got around to explaining why we decided Ah. to call our episode proclamations and not just (laughs) episodes (laughs) yes please Um, go ahead all right (laughs) so we are running with a theme from um Kotfikotet, and we are running specifically with a theme board from the Science of Sakul, who, as I'm sure mm-hmm. all our listeners know, <laughs> talk a lot about prophecy and fate and destiny. And we decided to release our episodes in the spirit of the science as proclamations. Yep. Yeah, I I, I love it. <laughs> I honestly I really love it. I think it's great. <laughs> and it adds extra character, I think, to our, our program here. Yes. I so, think. yep. So they'll all be called proclamations. And um, yeah. yeah, again, we are very, very excited um, for this project and very, very happy that you're all here joining us as we take those deep dives into the Star Wars Old Republic Kotfi Kotet story. We've, we've, we've got a lot of cool, cool stuff coming, essentially. This episode was a bit of a one-off because we've just had this this very casual conversation about who we are. But yep. you can expect a lot of content from us doing deep dives while still having fun, of course, but really doing deep analytical dives into this content. Um, we really want to just examine every part of it. And we hope that you want to join us on that journey. Yes, please do. Please do. All right. And with that being said, we will meet again. Your continued support means a great deal to us.